You know, I find it amazing that things can react differently from one instrument to another. I use the exact same shellac on this mandolin as I used on that Gibson guitar. In fact, it came out of the same spray gun at the same moment in time. In other words, I sprayed this or the other one first, I'm not sure. Then I picked up the opposite one and sprayed it. So in other words, I sprayed them at the exact same time with the exact same mixture. This one sands like butter, does not clog the sandpaper up at all. The Gibson, I can't sand for 10 seconds without having the sandpaper completely matted up and full. Now, explain that one, Batman. I just don't get it. I truly don't get it. That There's something, there's like a curse on that Gibson. It does not want me to finish it, period. I mean, it's the craziest thing. It's the exact same stuff. Completely different reaction. I say that now it's I'm starting to get just the teeniest amount of buildup but look I've sanded the whole top where the other thing the Gibson I can't sand an area that big before it's completely filled up the sandpaper maybe I'm getting a break because this is the world's finest mandolin ever built by a human right <laughs> and in case you're wondering that it's something to do with the foundation below it, they're pretty much the same. It was bare wood covered with some leather dye, and this is bare wood covered with some leather dye, and I don't see any difference. Right now, when I wrap this shellac, it mars the finish a little bit, so I need to get a, a harder finish on this, which I think the oil varnish will do that, at least I'm hoping it will, and that way I can move on to getting the rest of this instrument finished. I want to get it done. In fact, I'm behind schedule big time. I'm only sanding this because I think it's the right thing to do before I put the oil varnish on it. Well, I'm going to finish that all up off camera and I'll let you see it during the next process. I thought that since I'm going to be spraying the uh, final varnish on this body, then I might as well catch this peg head up with the staining and, and finishing and stuff. But before I can stain it and finish it, I got to do all the detail shaping. And you know, like you saw this out rough with the bandsaw and it's reasonably okay, but it's rough in there. And so I'm taking these little needle files and things and trying to get rid of all the saw marks and at least all of them that you can see, you know. And it's not easy, it's hard hard wood and you're filing on the end grain of the wood on top of that. So it's incredibly hard to smooth out and, and get it, you know, perfect. Perfect, there's that word again. But I try to get it as close to that perfect as I can get it. If you ask me honestly, is it perfect? I'd say probably not, but it's about as good as I can get it. Therefore, it's perfect enough for me. And that's what I'm shooting for. But I got a long ways to go here, so I just thought I'd show you that this is part of that little detail I'm telling you about. And, you know, I have to do that all the way around here. This, this edge here has to be detailed. Around here has to be detailed. So it really, from here all the way to here has to be hand detailed. Um, I mean, I can do some of it with, uh, you know, my spindle sander, and I, and I have. I've already done this pretty much with the spindle sander. These other places, you pretty much got to do them by hand. There's just almost no other good way to do it. So that's what I'm doing. Well, I didn't really film it, but I do have the binding on the fingerboard here, and it went 
pretty well. In fact, it went about as well as I could have expected. It did crack a teeny bit in places, and I'm going to have to force it and glue it and all that, but, but I think it's salvageable the way it is. You can't bend this stuff without it cracking a little bit when you bend bends this tight. But I'm happy with the way that turned out, so we'll move on from there. I've taken time and filed all the binding down to the edge of the uh, fretboard and around the ends of the frets. In other words, this binding actually stands up behind each of the frets. So there's no fret ends or anything like that. And in addition, I'm going to now scallop this tailpiece and I'm going to just use my Dremel tool. And of course, safety first, never plug it in until you're ready to use it. Some of you might be asking, why am I scalloping this down? This is simply for pick clearance. A lot of folks don't like this thing that they call the floor to end on the uh, fretboard for the F-style mandolins. A lot of people just prefer their fretboards be cut off straight. And that's fine. I like the look of this. I think the look is great. So what I do is scallop it down. Then I have plenty of pick clearance right here. And it's and I still get the look. With, I just don't put any frets in this, of course. Now I'm going to try to go ahead and get this thinned down to the point where these grooves disappear. On some fretboards you can do that. And other ones you cannot. So I'm not sure how far I can go on this one. But I'm hoping they'll disappear. I still do has some thickness here and I think it's going to work out. I have to be very careful from this point on. You won't find it on a well-traveled highway, not even on a dusty gravel road. And you have to want to be there when you find it, for it's not on any maps I know. You can see that it's very thin on the edge here, and that's okay, I'm all right with that because there'll be a support under here, and uh, you know, it's just a decoration thing. But I am gonna do a lot more cleanup by hand uh, to get it just as nice as I can get it. I'm gonna try to, you know, maybe get more of this one out, but I'll probably end up having to fill this last one here where it curls up. Probably just gonna have to fill that, but that's not that bad. Now I can use this little baby scraper and clean it up and get it level and smooth. And I don't have to worry about taking off too much or having an accident because the scraper is easy to control by hand and should do a good job and get it all leveled back out. And then I can always sand it some more too. With the scraper, what I try to do is change directions, and that kind of keeps everything level. You get rid of the bumps and things. That looks pretty good. That does a pretty fast job. I think I'm just going to go to a sand sandpaper now. So I've got some 220 here and a little sanding block, rubber sanding block. Well, I'm going to do a lot more detailing off camera, and then I'll show you what it looks like. I think you can see I have a fairly complex uh, setup here. This jig outfit here that I made a long time ago holds the neck of a mandolin very easily. I have it clamped down here in the vise. And then this vise also tilts so I can tilt it up until I got this exactly level. The vise also tilts up so I can tilt it up until I got this exactly level. It doesn't have to be perfectly level, you understand, but that just makes it easier to route because the router will be sitting on here flat. And it's almost flat that way too. I can probably twist it a little bit here in my vise. And now it's almost level both directions. I could, I mean, if I, you know, I'm just demonstrating here. I don't really need it this level. It doesn't matter. But like right there then, theoretically, that should be perfectly level in both directions. And it is. So there you go. Very handy little outfit. Well, I'm going to give it a shot. I uh, 
have my little rig here. This is the Proxon router and the only reason I'm using it as opposed to the Dremel is simply because I had already made this attachment for the Proxon before I got that fancy base for the Dremel. I could make another one of these fancy attachments for the Dremel. But anyway, right now I have this. My brother actually doesn't give me any compliments ever, but he called this genius. Uh, <laughs> so I'll take that. And what it is, it's just a way to adjust uh, the depth of the cut and everything. This little tiny lip here rides along the edge of the uh, wood, sort of like a bearing wood on a uh, router and that only lets you go in so deep. Then I've got a, a spiral bit cutter here which I hope will stop the tear out. Anyway, it's time to give it a shot. It's a little bit risky, but we're gonna give it a shot and get her done. Out across the field, through the pasture, climb along the steep and rocky trail. When you cross that little creek in the valley, You'll see that vine-covered church on the hill That vine-covered church above the valley Where the congregation gathered to pray Built with their hands from the forest Now stands as a marker for the grave Another one of those situations that I'm going to quit while I'm ahead um, you have to be careful going this way because this slopes under and your thing will let you plunge too deep right in this area So you got to be careful with that. I think I'm okay. I got close. I'll be honest, but I think I'm okay Now I got to do a lot of hand routing because the 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 edge of this protrudes out further so this doesn't route deep enough on these ends and I have to route around the inside of this hole and I have to route inside of here so there's a lot of hand work that I have to do yet, and I'll do most of that off camera. I'll show you a few highlights. Getting ready to drill the holes in the peg head on this mandolin. And this is yet another one of these deals with a very, very high pucker factor. And at least I've taken all the precautions I can take here. I've got a real good jig, a good drill guide. You know, everything's good and locked in and steady. So all I gotta do is drill it. I'm gonna get a better backer board for this because that'll help uh, with any chip out. This has been drilled so many times. I'm gonna get a thinner board that I can lay on top of that that's clean. Okay, this little thin board that I laid on there is a better solid board so it'll keep the chip out to a minimal, I hope. Well, I'm glad that's over with. We get these videos in the right sequence. You just saw me drill the holes in that peg head. And that means I can see if these are going to fit. These are the Waverly tuning keys. And voila! They go right in. See, and there's no play at all. <laughs> I mean like none. Zero. And yet the, I didn't have to force them in as you saw, which that's a real good thing. You don't want to have to force them in. And that's just a good tip for you. If you try uh, putting your tuning keys in and they are kind of binding going down in there, then you need to do something about that. You don't want to let them be bound. They should go in free and easy. And if they don't, then you need to work on it until they do. This one here had a little bit of slag around the holes, so I was cleaning them off. Let's see if this one will go in without any issues. Perfect. Absolutely perfect fit. I am tickled to death. That is one of the most nerve-wracking parts of building this thing, and it's uh, over with now. I don't have to deal with that anymore. So there you go. There's, there's our, those Waverly tuning keys. Those are beautiful, absolutely beautiful tuning keys. I still do have to counterbore the top so that we can put the bushings in there. And I guess there's no time like the present. I guess I might as well get after it. Here we go. Well, this is just as big a pucker factor right here, so 
Uh, I've got it set as well as I can have it set, so here we go. The siding and shingles are tattered. The steeple leans slightly to the right. And though all the windows are shattered, you can still hear them singing at night. Sorry about getting my hand in front of the camera there, but uh, on this last hole, you know, when you get down here to this end, what you, especially down here, I mean, it works. You could have this problem anywhere, but especially down here. When you lift this back up, it's going to want to lift this thing and tilt it, you know, just because there's so much leverage on it. So anyway, I was wanting to make sure I held it really good and I changed my position of my hand because I know how these things are. Where you actually make your biggest mistakes is on the withdrawal of the tool, not so much on the down. When you start to take it out, it wants to grab and pull it and uh, it'll cause a real mess. So keep that in mind if you're doing this kind of work. In my scramble to get this done, I decided I better get this thing fitted too and get this stained and put back on here. So what I'm going to do is a similar technique that I do for those bridges where I clean off all the finish. I've already traced around it. Now I just need to scrape the finish out of the way. I'm just going to use this little X-Acto knife because this is a, a kind of a green finish. It's not going to chip and lift like a lot of those other finishes do. And I can be very accurate with this X-Acto knife. What I'm trying to do is get it bare wood so when I glue this on here, it'll be a very good contact. It shouldn't take me but a couple minutes to get it all scraped off. I'll uh, show you what it looks like after I get her cleaned up. I could clamp this uh, with a clamp, but more than likely I'd end up damaging the other side and I've got that carving over there and the finish is on that and it's just probably not the best way to handle it. So another way I've handled these in the past is to do this and I'll show you it's a good way to do it. And this is just a temporary uh, screw that's going to go in here and be a just a clamp to keep it glued down. I could do it a lot of ways but this is an easy way and it works really well. This is not a high stress part so it I, I've got the glue on here. I only putting it on the one side. That's plenty good for this. And I'm lining her up and then I'll go ahead and drive this short screw in here. Just a little slight snug there at the end is all you want. You don't want to try to really pull it in there crazy tight or anything. And that should do it. So I'll give that overnight. We'll take that screw back out. The screw won't stay in there. And the only other thing I'm going to do is just, as a sanity check, is just to, uh, you know, line this back up here and make sure that it looks good. It looks pretty good. It's hard to tell with that screw in the way now, to be honest. It's uh, a little hard to tell, but as far as I can tell, it looks like it's going to be just about right. Yeah, I think it's going to be just fine. Okay, so I'm going to quit on it for today. I've got a lot done today. I got, you know, this cleaned up here. And I got the holes drilled in. I got the router routing mostly done up here. I still have some hand routing to do. We'll do that in the morning when I'm fresh and get that all cleaned up real nice. I think it, it's mostly just staining and finishing it and then finally putting the binding on it. Been working a lot off camera on this, trying to get it caught up. And I've got these little filler pieces put in here. They just need a lot of tweaking now. So first of all, it's a little bit proud of the the fingerboard, so I'm going to cut that down just to get myself an even start here. On this side, I think I can, well, I'm not sure. It's probably not good to use this, but I'm going to try using the sander a little bit on this side. And it might work, and I may have to go to a smaller tool, but let's see if it, if it works. Yeah, it's not working too bad, but I think I'm going to try something else. The brothers and sisters who worship Gather in that holy place still Though they lie at rest in the valley 
beneath that vine covered church on the hill. It's sort of working and it's sort of not working, just kind of like always. There's always something. I felt like I was awful close on this side here. I'm not exactly sure why this one's working out that way. Anyway, I'm working to try to get myself, uh, you know, make these look fairly even. This one always ends up being bigger on my mandolins. I don't know why, but it does. And I'm not going to tell you different. And now I'm going to try to get in here with hand tools, I guess, and try to shape it some a little better. That vine-covered church above the valley where the congregation gathered to pray Built with their hands from the forest Now stands as a marker for the grave uh, I'm not too happy with that yet. Quite a bit more work on that it's going to take. I'm not sure how far I can go with that till I get the binding on here. I think the binding might have a little bit of impact, especially on this side. It's a lot of work and it's a lot of difficult things to do. I know you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing, but uh, you can at least tell that uh, I am doing the detail routing on this and it's all done by hand. There's no guides or anything that I can use. I just have to look at my lines and just follow them. Yeah. In case you're wondering what I'm using, it's just a spiral cutter bit from Stumac. I don't know if you can see it there or not. Might give you a better view that way. Anyway, um, I'm going to have to draw these lines in a little better. They're not in very bright anymore. They've been smudged. I'm not going to film any more of this since you can't really see what I'm doing anyway. I'll show you what it looks like when I get her finished. I think this is the first one that I remember returning the binding at the end of the peg head here. I wanted to show it to you because you probably won't see this very often. And the way I'm doing it is I'm going to cut out a section here like that. Instead of cutting a groove across the back of this, which would wink it, weaken the neck, I'm cutting the section out of this. I'm leaving it stick down, so it'll come down to the bottom of the other binding around here, but it's just that I'm, you know, I'm going to make it, you know, instead of weakening the neck, that's what I'm doing. So, there you go. I always try to give these things some thought, I just can't talk. Now to cut out that little center section, I've already taken a razor saw and I sawed down both sides. And now I think I'm just going to try a file. I know this is going to take a few minutes, but I don't want to break it and it's pretty delicate. And this file is a double cut file, so it won't take real long. Being careful, careful right on the ends especially. And then I can just kind of hog it out with this file. It's not going to take very long, doesn't look like. Well, that looks pretty good. Let's see if it fits. So basically, that's what it looks like up close. Now let's see if it fits. Okay, so there we have it. Um, I see just the least little bit of stuff on there from the filing so I'm going to clean that up real quick. All right so let's try it. This will be the first try right here. Ah! I say you quit while you're ahead. That like fits like a glove. I didn't even expect it. To, it doesn't even move. It just fits perfectly. Yeah there's that word again. Perfect. It's perfect. Too bad if you don't like perfect. Okay, now that I got that piece in there, I'll have a way to, to uh, come up to this. Now, you know, the easy way would just be to butt it up, but you're going to see the end of it if I do that. So I'm not going to butt it up. I'm going to actually cut 45s. Why make it simple? So in order to cut the 45s, first thing I'm going to do is trim this off a little bit. I think I'm a little long, and, and it'll just help it a little bit if I trim it. 
and I think I'm still a little long but that's okay a little long is one thing too long is a different thing same way on that side I'm a little long still but I can handle that now I'm going to start trying to cut a 45 on this and that might be easier said than done I know you can't really see what I'm doing so you'll just have to get your glimpses where you can not cooperating very well it's kind of stuck right there and it's like there's a hard spot in that piece of wood be my luck to be a little knot right there or something well that actually didn't turn out terrible it's not for all the trouble I had cutting that, it weren't, it didn't do too bad. See if the other side cuts easier. That's not too bad. I think they're both a little long still. Anyway, I'm going to start getting the piece made for these right here. I'm going to go over to the bending iron for that. Yeah, I know you're kind of far away on the camera there, but it's just easier for me to keep it simple. This is what the secret of bending this stuff is. You use a little thin strip of metal and this will pull on the wood and spread the stress out rather than, like if I only pull on the ends of the wood, it'll break right in the middle. But if I use this to pull the wood around that pipe, then that hot pipe, then it works much better. I'm soaking this down. I'm just going to try to get it to uh, match there. Now, I, the, the trick of this is, of course, I have to uh, get the right side of this out. So I'm going to do this side here first, and so I can do it this way. So you got a nice curve there, and voila! I think, I think we're in business. Except for the fact that I didn't notice it, but there's a hollow space in the end of this one, so i got to cut it off and do that again. Yeah, it couldn't have been that simple. So anyway, I cut off that little hollow spot at the end there, and now we're good. Um, might even still be long enough, not quite. I need to just do a little bit more now, make it a little longer. So you can see here that I've got this uh, bent for this curve. And I have the curly maple side out, which is very important. What I'm going to do is leave it a little long here and a little long here and cut it off. And that piece is made. Now I'm going to make a piece for the opposite side. And I have to bend it the opposite way. I'm going to keep bending all these parts and uh, I'll show you what it looks like when I get to the next step. I've got all the parts bent and ready to install and so I'm going to start here work and, and wrap this just these two pieces then I'm going to go to these two pieces wrap them and just keep working my way up here and hopefully try to get it all done in one one fell swoop let's see if that works that's that's easier said than done I can tell you for sure but you never know we might get lucky I've already got the bevels cut on these and everything, so they should look good going in here. I think it's going to work. Just got to get the right piece in the right place. It's not simple exactly, but it's not exactly rocket science either. All right, take this piece of really sturdy rubber band. This stuff is strong, man. You can really put some torque on this. It's, it's kind of amazing how much torque you can actually apply with this inner tube. I, I think I would have been surprised if you could have told me that ahead of time. I think I'd have said, nah, there's no way, but to get this, I haven't measured it. I don't know what the actual numbers would be, but they gotta be a lot. I'm going to see if I can go around here like this without getting in my way. Of course, I'm getting in the way for this future thing up here, but maybe by the time I get there, I can take those off. Wrap a couple of wraps around there. And that's not going to let me proceed, though. 
All right, so I can't really proceed so because of this, and I do want those tight there. I think those are necessary, these extra little flaps that I put on there. So I think I'll just wait to go further. I can maybe cut a little bit of this off. I can see it's quite long. Nip a little of that off of the way. All right, I'm going to give that about uh, oh, 30 minutes at least, if maybe not an hour, before I try to proceed any further. Well, I was just talking to you, and you weren't listening to me at all. Um, I, that's because I didn't have a camera on. I, I was saying that there is nothing that compares to this rubber band when, it, when you come to putting this binding on in places like this, especially odd shapes. Yeah, you can see how I could twist it and pull it up tight right here, and tape wouldn't even stand a chance against this rubber band on a situation like this. Tape is good, but this is ten times better. Well, it wasn't easy, but I got those two pieces in there. I forced them in and uh, they ain't coming out and I don't even have any glue on them. What I'm going to do is just put this regular wood glue in the places I can get it and in the places where I can't get it I'm just going to use CA glue. I didn't want to put glue on it until I knew I could get it in there and once I knew I could get it in there I didn't want to take it back out. It's just kind of one of them deals. And now I should be able to get some little tiny wedges and wedge it apart here. My problem is finding the small enough wedges here. There they go. And just work them on around until I am satisfied that they're in there. And that should do that. And then I should be able to do the rest. I don't really want to get the CA glue in there yet. I, I think I'll just wait on that till in the morning. It'll just be simpler. So I'm going to tighten this back up, pull this in here, that, oh my gosh, that didn't help. And I guess I don't really need that one. I can pull this around and do just as well. Yeah, this inner tube rubber band, I don't know. I only started using this a few years ago and I truly don't know what I did before I got this. This is, this is really one of the very best things I've ever come up with for this type of work. Why the other people hadn't thought of that one before, at least I. I'm sure other people have done that, don't get me wrong. I've done it before myself, but not for this purpose. I've made rubber bands out of inner tubes many times. But boy, I'll tell you what, for this purpose, you can't beat it. Forcing everything around. And I'm gonna let that set until in the morning. I, I guess technically I could go ahead and get this piece in there too. Um, I think I could. I'll try it anyway. Well, once again, I didn't really show it, but I did force that little tiny piece in there, I got them all in place. So the whole peg head is done. I, I took this reamer, it was the only thing I had that was tapered that would hold this opening in about the right shape. And I just turned the reamer so the cutters weren't really cutting anything. And uh, anyway, stuck it down in there, seems to be doing the job. I can still see some problem areas here. Now that I think about it, I think I'll go ahead and just get regular wood glue in there and see if I can't force those together. Some of this is going to have to just have CA glue applied after it sets up overnight with this other glue. And that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, I'm afraid I'm going to glue a piece of wood in there and I don't really want to glue a piece of wood in there, but I would like to hold that in there. I'm going to just stick it in there and see what happens. And then I'll use this rubber band for the rest of it. I probably have to take that back out. I think that's about as good as I could do it. And we're just going to let that set up overnight. And then tomorrow we should be able to use a little bit of CA glue to penetrate in the places where I couldn't get the regular glue. And then we'll just uh, trim it all down and make it pretty so it won't be long now. 
Off camera, I went and bent all these different parts. I think I actually did show this one on camera, but back several, actually a couple of weeks ago at least. But the rest of these I bent today and I bent them off camera, but I'm about ready to start putting these on here. I've only got shellac on this and originally I was going to, uh, my idea was to put a, a coat of oil varnish over this too. I'm not sure I'm going to do that though. I think I'm just going to try it like this and take my lumps, if I have a bunch of lumps. Um, I don't know. It, you just, no matter what you do, something will throw you a curve. It doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to take my chances and we'll see how it goes. This has separated, so I'm trying to, because when you bend it this tight of a bend, it often separates. So I'm trying to get the glue back in the separation there and see how that goes. Fix that. Nothing simple, I can just tell you that much for sure when it comes to these things. And I'm gonna have to get my rubber band to wrap around this. Okay, off camera I decided to regroup here and get this all straightened out. So I got my vise there with my homemade clamp that holds the neck. Because you need as many hands as possible. So one thing I don't need to be doing is holding onto the mandolin while I'm doing this. And so I let the uh, vise and my little special jig do that. All right, so I'm getting glue all the way around here. I think we're good there. And I've already tested this and dry, it fit up pretty good. So I'm just hoping that it doesn't change here while it's wet. And it might, because things do that. Pretty good here on my joint. That's the main thing I'm worried about is this joint right now. I also decided I'm not going to put a body point there on this one. I'm going to just leave the raw wood as the body point there because it does fit up pretty well. And it's such a low point that I just didn't feel like it was necessary to put a special, you know, wood point there or bone point or whatever. All right, so now I really have to take some time here and get this to hold in there really well. My wife stopped in there and helped me out, which was, she was good timing for a change there. Usually she's here, you know, five minutes after I'm done, but that worked out perfect. That should do it, I think. So now I'll just tie it off and we should be good to go. I'll just tie it off on the F5. It's fairly easy. You just go through that tight spot there a couple times, two or three times, and it kind of locks itself in. You don't have to worry about it too much. Well, that looks like that's gonna be real good and tight. I'm a little concerned about all the glue squeeze out, but you know, we'll just have to address that when we get to it. So now we're good from here all the way around to here. We've got to go this little piece and all this through here and around and inside. And that's just the back. Then we have to do the whole thing over on the front. There's a lot of different methods for, you know, joining these things. My method is pretty much put the piece of binding in place and then cut the joint. You know, a lot of people probably cut this before they put the binding in place. I just find I get better results by doing it this way. Now, it's also risky doing it this way. I'm not going to try to sugarcoat it. You can tear up some things and make a big mess if you're not careful. I'm going to be using this chisel to actually cut this uh, joint here and I could slip and, and make a gouge down the side or anywhere you know I could cut my hand too you know so you got to be careful so I put a backer board like this behind the binding so that when I you know go through I'll stop on that board number one but it also supports this so that I'm not putting all the pressure right on the binding itself presently the binding is just square and blunt I, I need to cut a bevel on the end of it 
to meet up with the next piece that I'm putting in there. So like this next piece is going to come in here like so, and so you can imagine that both ends are going to have to be beveled. So this piece, I need to bevel it, and of course, you know, it's awkward to do it here in the air like this, but I'm just giving you, you know, for the view of the camera, you know, you just basically, you can imagine that I'm just beveling it off like so, and I just keep working it out like this. I'm going to have to get this down and do a better job, but my point is you can see what I'm doing there, and you can see how it's beveled. And then, you know, I've got to make those bevels match up, uh, you know, when they come together. And it's, it's, a, it's a process. It's complicated. It's hard to do. Right now I've got a little more wood there than I need. I'm going to have to cut this off. But uh, I just wanted to show it to you and just give you some idea how I go about this. It's a very complicated, time-consuming process. And I'm going to do it off camera and just finish it off camera because you really can't see the detail I'm doing anyway. I just wanted to show you my process for doing it.